Years ago, I, I stumbled upon an image where somebody had blended a texture with another subject in the photo. I think they did wildlife, but I've seen it in you know, cars, trucks, planes, birds, animals, barns, you name it. And it, the texture blended image looked really, really cool. So uh, there wasn't a lot of training on it at the time. So I just reversed engineered it and I just I kind of fell in love with the, the whole process, which is where this tutorial comes from. Uh, down in the description, there's even uh, a little link if you want to, to grab the follow along photos, if you want to follow along by yourself. But the idea is I, I've got a library full of thousands of photos that I was just taking my camera of just random things, right? I've taken pictures of cars, boats, planes, barns, flowers, you you name it, in bad light in a poor setting, just because I had my camera with me and something grabbed me about it. Uh, those photos typically don't resonate for me, okay? So uh, what I found is I they do when I do something like blending a texture in with it, I get a very different, unique uh, creative process from it. So that's really where all this comes from. I would say, you know, if you're somebody that thinks, oh, that's just digital art, it's a composite. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I'm not calling it any different, um, but it is fun to do. And I would say I, I still spend the majority of my time with, we'll call it natural, pure photography, just wiggling sliders inside a Lightroom and Photoshop for a little bit of cleanup. But I still spend the majority of my time with that, but I do enjoy kind of flexing a whole different brain muscle on this stuff. It gets me a very creative, unique photo. And I would say to anybody that's thinking about it, that looks interested in it, it doesn't have to be either or. Nobody's telling you, you have to do this and you can only do this. You can do both and, and, and give it a try and see if it's something you're interested in. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you look up my Photoshop document, which is already set up, I'm not gonna go through the process. I basically uh, just layered two textures on top of each other, and then I put the um, I put the subject photo on top of that, okay? it's We're gonna do layers and masks. You can change it. You can put textures on top, however, it just changes the, the way you do the layers and masks. But this is, this is how it's set up here. You just have to resize them, put them all into the same document. From here, I click on the subject layer, and I'm gonna go to that contextual taskbar and choose remove background, okay? And what that's gonna do is it'll automatically go in there and make a mask for us. And that's why I like remove background. It makes a mask for us where it it's essentially does select subject, but in reverse. And it also automatically makes that mask. Now from here, we're gonna go press B for the brush tool. We're gonna head up to the brush picker up here. And what I want to do is I'm, I use generally a large brush. The size is going to change. Okay. We're going to use different size brushes throughout this. The hardness doesn't ever really change. That hardness has to be set down to zero. We want a very feathered brush. And then from here, I'll start to mess around with the flow a little bit. And by all means, you know, if you've got a pen and tablet that, that, you know, pressure sensitivity can help with it too. Um, so you can use your pen and tablet to control this, but I'm just going to go to flow. I'm just using a, a trackpad here and we're going to go in and we want to, I want to bring back, we can't just have a bird floating in the air. Okay. Um, part of texture blending helps when you can start to bring back additional elements from the original photo. It's blending the texture. So if I shift click on that mask, you can see bringing back this branch here, um, that'll definitely help. We want we want our subject to be sitting on something. Same thing would go for the ground. You know, I'd want to bring back some grass or whatever a subject was sitting on on the ground. If it was a car on the ground, I'd want to bring back some of the driveway or whatever. So what we'll do here, we're gonna go click on that layer. I'm just gonna use Photoshop to help us make the selection. So I'm gonna go over to the object selection tool. It will automatically start to select things in the photo. I'm gonna go click on the branch down here and that'll put a selection around it. And then let's press, let's shift click back on this mask here so that we're uh, we're working on it and bring the, bring the regular view back up. Go to my brush tool. So right now it's all black. I've got a paint on it with white. I'm going to increase the flow setting here because I don't need to do anything. Um, I don't need to do anything that creative at this point. I just want to start to bring back some of that branch. Okay. And I don't want to have a low flow setting and have to paint it all back in. So this just lets me do it with essentially just one swipe of the brush there. Okay. All right. So that looks good. I'm going to press command or control D to deselect. Also, while Photoshop is deselecting, perfect time for a very quick word from our sponsor. Uh, if you like this tutorial, 
I have a course that's totally dedicated to texture blending. Um, it uses a lot of different examples, not just wildlife, landscape, still life, flowers, a boat I think is in there. So, um, and then the, the course really dives deeper into the blending. Okay, I'm really just scratching the surface of what I do to blend uh, the textures together, but it comes with all the follow along photos, comes with a lot of extra textures inside of there. And then again, a lot of different blending techniques, a lot of different finishing touches that, that can really help make images like this stand out. There's even a premium option that'll, that it gives you Photoshop brushes and I walk you through how you can make your own textures. If you think texture blending can get addictive, try making your own textures. It gets really, really addictive once you, uh, once you learn how to do it and see how creative you can be. So you don't have to buy them or use somebody else's. You can actually use your own images. So it's a fun process. As I mentioned early, it doesn't have to be either or. I've got a lot of photos in my photo library that don't resonate with me as a regular photo, but when I do something like this with them, uh, I just enjoy it. I have a lot of fun with it and I create a very unique photo. So course is on sale right now. It's very short, easy to get through, uh, very affordable. So I hope you'll swing by to find out more. And then now's where we'll get a little bit We'll get a little bit unique and creative with it, bring that flow down. And this is where the blending part comes in. You know, there is no right or wrong answer. Everybody's gonna have a different view for it. Uh, I'll switch our foreground back or switch our, our brush color back over to black. And now we paint on the mask. And now I just start blending that edge in. And that's the key to texture blending. It can't, it can't really have firm edges for the most part. If there's feathers and fur, we do, we do want that to be fairly sharp edged, but at the same time, we want to blend that texture in. With a low flow setting, you might see me, you might see my cursor spending time in one place kind of scribbling like that. And that's because I'm building up the effect with flow. Okay, the more I scribble in one place, the more we're gonna start to eat away at that edge there. All right, so that's looking pretty good around the edges. And I could do the same thing all around uh, the outside of the eagle here as well. Just blend in a little bit of that texture. All right. Now, you might have noticed that I preemptively put a blue texture at the bottom there. And that's because I knew green was a good color theme for this, this image. But I also thought that putting some blue up in the sky could look pretty cool. And by the way, I did, I did change this blend mode to overlay. I don't know if I covered that earlier. I might have already done it before I started the tutorial. So just if you're wondering when you're following along, uh, I did change that blend mode of that green texture to overlay. But let's go ahead and add a layer mask to it. And then let's, let's make life easier on ourselves. Let's click on the eagle layer and we'll do select subject. And then we can just reverse it to get everything else but the subject. And that, that'll just help me, uh, that'll help me go in there and paint and not have to worry too much about it. So just go to select inverse after select subject. So now I have a selection of everything else but the eagle. Now we're gonna go back to that layer mask. The mask is white. Remember we're using a very low flow setting. The mask is white, so it means I have to paint on it with black. So now I'll just start painting with black toward the top of the photo, and that'll start to infuse and bring in, essentially hiding the green overlay and letting us bring in a little bit of that blue in there, okay? If you go too far, you can just switch from black to white, kind of ease that transition a little bit, but I think that definitely uh, that definitely helps giving a little bit of a color shift in there from blue uh, in the sky toward green toward the bottom. Next thing is, I don't like when my edges look perfect like this, where it just goes straight out into the, into the edge of the photo. I think having a little texture blended there, it's almost like a natural vignette, but you're using texture instead. So let's go back to the eagle mask. And then we know that we can use the brush on there and we know that we, when we start painting with black, we'll start hiding the eagle and the branch and we'll start bringing in the texture layer below. So you should actually paint with black, not white, but just, just that, you know, again, it's making it, it appears to be making it darker, but what I'm doing there is really just infusing, hiding the branch and infusing the texture from that layer below and letting that blend in a little bit better. Okay. Now, the other thing that'll do is uh, we're still working on that mask. I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller with the left bracket key. Again, make sure the flow is really, really down low. And what I'm gonna do is just try to bring in 
a little bit more texture around the edges of the wings. Remember, if you see my, my, my cursor kind of jittering like that, that's me, I call it scribbling in that area. So I don't typically do it over the body or the face or anything like that, but everything else I tend to try to start to bring in a little bit of texture. Okay, and then hence, the, hence the idea of blending. All right, so do it as much or as little as you want. Again, with all of this stuff, it's very, very, uh, it's very free flowing. It, there's no rules to it, but I think that just kind of helps blend that in a little bit. We'll do some finishing touches here. Uh, that monster keyboard shortcut, Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E on the Mac, Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter E on the PC, merges us into one brand new layer. Uh, my favorite finishing touches, just go to the Camera Raw filter, brings it in as one layer. Uh, sometimes I'll click Auto, see what it does to the exposure. Not a big fan of that. Uh, I always go to the profiles. To me, these are a great place to go in and just add a little bit of a finishing, almost a finishing touch, a finishing color style. Tends to tie things together. So the artistic ones are always fun to look through. Um, black and white, if you wanted to go black and white, that'd be fun to look through. I don't, modern is a good one. And I always like modern nine and 10. In fact, modern eight, nine, and 10 always seem to be where I land. Modern nine's a nice one for this. It gives a little bit of a, a matte type of a finish to it. So we'll go back there, go down to effects, maybe add, you can add texture to it and that'll give it more of a textured appearance. You can go the opposite way and it gives it a softer appearance. So again, no right or wrong. I added a little bit of texture, maybe go reverse a little bit with clarity to soften it, but that gives it a nice look. Click OK. And then my final finishing touch is press Command or Control J to duplicate the layer and then change the blend mode to multiply. By changing the blend mode to multiply, you deepen all of the colors in the photo. Then we add a layer mask to it. I go to the brush tool. Again, big, soft, low flow setting brush. And then I just paint. And what I'm doing here is I'm adding, I'm adding a vignette, but I'm adding it in a different way. I'm using the photo to vignette itself. Okay. And if you look at that mask, you can see the big black spot in the middle there. So I thought the bottoms were a little bit deep. So I'm going to paint a little bit more down there. Okay. It's going to be too intense. So we just lower the opacity, bring it down to zero and then gradually start bringing it back up. So you're essentially just using the photo itself and you're almost multiplying the colors of the photo itself to, to give that, that edge vignette to the photo, which really does tie everything in, really kind of funnels your attention toward the middle. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, if you want to follow along with the same images I'm using, there's a link uh, down below that you can download those files from. Um, also, please swing by, check out that texture blending course. Trust me, of all the courses I do, this is one that I get. I get so many great, so much great feedback from uh, because people are excited that they they just did something totally new inside of Photoshop. And lastly, if you're looking for just a plain editing tutorial, I also have those. Uh, this one is when whenever I have good light in a, in a location and I want to make that good light a little bit better. Uh, this is a little trick I use. So if you're looking for another tutorial, it's a great place to go to next.